Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Hyphens Classics. Some really good news today, in fact, two lots. First thing, we've just gone through 200 subscribers, so thank you very much for all of those who've taken the time to just click that button. So that's the first great news. Second thing is, we've kind of got a sponsorship, and I want to be a little bit careful with that word, because I guess it can mean lots of things. Um, it could be uh, some companies paying me some money to do stuff. Uh, it could be uh, that they're paying for some of the kit or the content uh, that you're going to be seeing. Um, or, as in this case, uh, obviously creating content requires a lot of different bits and pieces. So I've been using my iPhone for this, uh, a lot of the recording. I have also, uh, also have a GoPro, which I've been using as well. When, so when I started a lot of this work, uh, I was working with a good friend from 10.4 Productions. So he does this day in, day out. So we've used a lot of his microphone kit and some other stuff. And obviously he's been filming me. Uh, so the quality has been a lot better than what we've seen uh, during lockdown because I've had to do all of this kind of with myself. Um, so I've had his lapel mics and all that. So the audio quality has always been good no matter what I'm doing. Anyway, so I'm in the AV industry. Uh, so I'm quite lucky in that uh, matter. I was with one of uh, my suppliers recently and I just happened to ask, I was talking about the fact that uh, I do this and I noted that they have some components that they ha have in the market that would probably suit and have been very lucky that they have sent me through uh, one of their um, products, microphone products that connects straight into an iPhone. So the product they sent me, so the company is Shure. Thank you very much, Shure, for, for sending that through. It's been uh, greatly received, and I'm sure by now you probably already noted that the sound quality uh, coming from this opening piece is a lot better than it has been in the past. So what I've got is the MV88, and I will put pick, uh, images somewhere, there, there, um, of me receiving that and opening it so you can see what it looks like. The great thing about this product as well is that uh, there's some two pieces of software, Motive Video, Motive Audio, I think, um, that applications come with it which allow you to set parameters around how the microphone works. The nice thing is the Motive Video uh, is it's a, an overlay, it has you still have the access to all of the audio settings and you have VU meters on the side. So you can, who, so whoever's videoing can actually tell, you know, how good the quality is, or, you know, you can tell how good the sound is, you know, where the sound is. Again, thank you very much to Shaw for sending that through. It was a, it's a really, really nice piece addition to my kit. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I'm going to jump now from here to the barn and we're going to talk about the Land Rover. Right. Rough at the barn. Now the fun begins. Okay, so we're going to look at the Land Rover, and again, uh, like I said, there was a, a viewer who requested a tour of the tour of the Land Rover. So we're going to take you around that today, and then uh, we'll finish this video up. We'll just do this on the Land Rover, and then I've got some more stuff to do on the Mini later on. Let's go and take a closer look. Okay, so starting from the front, what can we tell you? Uh, let's look at the different bits. Bumper, brand new. Um, the one that was on it, I think is, I've still got it somewhere. It's over there. Uh, definitely not right for this model. Uh, it was definitely, a, it was a lot bigger. The interesting thing, fish plates. So this is a, a very early 1950. And again, uh, I think people talk about this left, right and center, right? This car, the model is a 1950, but it came out of the factory in 1949. Um, from my understanding of uh, someone else who has actually been to Gaiden and looked up records and knew my, uh, knew my VIN number, this came out in late July, which to me, again, I thought the factory ran from sort of August through to sort of May, June, but um, may, maybe they finished in May and started again in July. But anyway, that's when this came out. The fish plates is very much more uh, 48, 49 thing. It only lasted for a very short period of time in the uh, 1950 model, and then uh, and then it disappeared. And it, you just had the flat ends on on the on the chassis rails here. So these these disappeared, and you just ended up flat. Uh, and then the bumper had the the, the ta tabs on them that would sit over the top of the uh, chassis. So anyway, what else can we tell you? 
you can just see peering through there the, the front axle. Now this is quite special as well. The front axle, let's see if we can come down here a little bit. Uh, the front axle, which I'll do a video on this um, soon coming up. The front axle is actually from a 1949. So this would have been coming out of the factory around about December, January. Sort of uh, 48, 49 is when that came out. So quite lucky to have uh, an older knuckle. It's the uh, knuckle system in there. Uh, what I've done... When I got this car, the, someone had just put that one-shot grease in there, which, you know, I think is okay for a UV joint, but with the knuckles, I don't think it's a good idea. There were some minor signs of wear in there, but not too bad. But we'll go through that on the axle video. Um, one of the other things people do, as you can see up on the ball there, the ball, people do put um, gaiters across those to protect them. Uh, I haven't quite decided what I'll do with that yet but we'll we'll see in in time whether this how much use this gets uh, from there okay looking up the controversial bit that uh, you might be able to see from here LED indicators um, over the time I read different reports as to whether you had to have indicators in these things or not um, <clears throat> some say yes some say no I bought the wiring for it anyway when I bought the um, the loom from Water Sparks, uh, so the the loom was there. So I've just put those in there. So I don't really want to put the big orange lights on the front. Not so good. Um, cutouts. That's just the way it is. I prefer to have it with the you know looking um, with the full mesh, but it is what it is. I'm not overly concerned with um, going to get a new piece there at the moment. Again, this looks more authentic. Looks a lot nicer. The RAC and the AA badge were on the car, uh, as were the Series 1 Club badge. So um, quite happy to have all that back on um, back on the car. Again, when I got the car, this also had more of the, the later front end on it, but that came with the original, which is really nice. Had to do some repairs. So up here, the, the lamp holders had been just chopped off. So someone, rather than taking the light out, just cut through the, the holder and taken it away. So had to have those repaired. Um, as you can see here, those are some cracks. So I've had all those welded up as well. So that it uh, should be nice and strong. Managed to get hold of a good horn. Um, the horn mounting was slightly different. And I have seen in some cases where the horn is mounted on this side. Um, but anyway, it'd be interesting to see what people think of that. The wings had these little um, fog lights in them. Uh, fog lights, or they were definitely different lights. They were pretty horrible. Anyway, I took them out. I've had this patch from the back. Uh, obviously, on the number plate side, you can't see it. What I'm thinking of doing is putting um, like a transport plate here. Uh, and because uh, I'm a Kiwi, we're thinking of doing things like putting a Kiwi emblem on there or something like that. But we'll see what we do with that. But yeah, definitely want to try and hide that at some point. Uh, the hooks, the bonnet hooks. So this one needs to probably be repaired. It's, you know, the head of this can sometimes slip out if you're not careful with that. Uh, this one here has been repaired here. It's got a bit of a weld on there because that had to be fixed. Um, but Otherwise, she's all good. Um, I, oh, I do also need to do a bit of work on that because, yeah, at the moment I can't pull that up. Um, I think what's happened is in the repair, this is this is spread too far apart, and so this is now the the pin is too close to the bonnet. But uh, that's got to come off, and we'll double check all that. Um, these uprights, I've got some material to put on the top here, but these are not the right sort. These are from the later model, where this would have been attached onto here and then hooked over this. Uh, so what's that, 52, 52, they changed this, or 54, anyway, can't remember. But it shouldn't have these holes here, basically. Um, so I don't really want to put the material on there just yet um, until I sort that out. This one's fine. Uh, this one has been, so I've repaired this one, uh, certainly with, uh, well, Darren, my friend, did most of the work on this, to be fair. Um, so... I noticed, I think it was, this was Land Rover Series 1 Club as well. Someone used a coach bolt in here, but what I've done is used a six inch nail. So six inch nail, put some thread on it. Um, there's a nut sitting on the top. 
there. Um, you can get these rivets and replace the rivets. Um, I've also found, after I put this rivet in, you can actually find some brass ones since these are brass top, but it is what it is. It's all in there, it's all working well, which is uh, really good. Very fortunate to have the right lights, though the bulkhead um, on this car when I had it again was was wrong. It was off uh, an 88, I believe it was, as was the windscreen. In fact, uh, there's the old windscreen over there. Uh, so if anyone wants it, it's available. And there's some door tops and a, and a, a um, bonnet over there as well. Um, so quite fortunate to get hold of these lights. They came off a an old Bentley. So um, fancy car now, see, Bentley lights. Uh, what else can I tell you um, about this so far? We'll talk about that in a minute, but from the front end, we'll come back and have a look under the bonnet a little bit later. But um, for now, some more repairs on the wings here. Um, had some repairs around here, the holes were cracked. So put the rubber stop in. Um, now, here's an interesting one. So obviously the windscreen wiper cable comes out here. All right, this is the green one. Uh, yes, I know it needs some, um, it needs that metal shield on it. I uh, haven't got around to getting it. I had hoped I'd ordered some, but, uh, well, I found someone who was going to get me some, but haven't uh, managed to follow that up yet. The interesting question was, what do you do with the indicator wiring? So this has come up, I brought this up in the same way. Um, it's not perfect yet, but we've got the rubber stops on, rubber stops. All of this goes through. Uh, this is for the trafficators, so I wanted to run both. I have got one trafficator that uh, I'll probably look to put on, but I haven't got a second one yet. I'm trying to get hold of a second one. Um, uh, I do have, sorry, I have a number of trafficators, but um, only one correct one at the moment. Um, part of the charm of this bulkhead when I got hold of it, so this bulkhead came out of Australia. It's got a dent here that was all filled in. Um, I've just Oh, I thought, you know, so what? Had a dent. So I pulled it all out and it is what it is. Had some repairs done um, down on the posts, down on the posts here on the inside. Um, had a repair up on the top here um, where it had gone a bit funny as well. Um, where it had gone a bit rusty. Uh, what else can we tell you? This, this is something I bought. Is it the perfect one? Not really. Um, don't believe it's quite a CX-1. I think this is the CX-1 that they have. The one that was on it was more from a Series 2, Series 3. Uh, lucky to have the good steering wheel. Um, steering box, I had to get one. Got one quite um, cheaply as well, which is quite nice. We'll talk about the switch inside here is um, the little contacts, if anyone's looked at them, they're quite thin. Uh, so they don't carry a lot of current. Um, and one of the things people talk about is these can sometimes stick. Uh, over a time, you know, because they carbon up. So I've put in a couple of relays, which I'll show you later. Dash, um, I had to completely rewire and rebuild the petrol gauge. Um, the bit I haven't done yet is I haven't rebuilt the sender uh, in the petrol tank, so it still doesn't work. Um, the switch, light switch there, that's obviously not original, uh, but I thought I'd leave it in, only to find out that it actually doesn't function properly. So that has to be replaced at some point. Um, your trafficators, indicators, wire, switch, your trafficator switch. So managed to get that in. I've put a piece of wood in here because the, the input, main input lead is so close. I'm pretty sure it's going to touch the metal. So I just made this little wooden um, uh, washer, I guess, spacer to um, hold that away and uh, got that all connected up nicely now. Only had the two seats. Uh, it doesn't have a third seat. It did have a cushion, but it was uh, it was just uh, it wasn't a, a, a proper proper cushion, and I can't imagine anyone really sitting in there to be honest, unless they're really short. But haven't decided whether I'll get another seat or not um, at the moment. We're just going to leave it as it is. So, but seats look in pretty condition. That's how they were. Coming down the back, let's just have a look. Well, one of the things I wanted to do is get new door tops because of the way this car had been. Um, set up before someone had bolted drilled extra holes and bolted the door top down so as you can see this one's um, not the best um, I nearly managed to get uh, some at the Newbury show but the guy only had one with him he had a second one he said but it just didn't have it with him so um, 
I'm hoping maybe uh, next time we ought to get something. Uh, these obviously not necessarily the best. What I did, I'll show you what I did on the other side because the other side was really, really bad. Uh, someone had drilled out these holes, so I've put a bolt right the way through to hold it in, and I may do something like that on this side because that's not not the best, is it? Um, put the rubber on the front, that was perfect. Putting the rubber on the bottom hasn't quite worked the way I'd hoped. Um, gets a bit tight at the bottom. But, um, and the, and oh, sorry. And here you can see with that shut, there's still a bit of wobble in there. So, which is, is the, is the, is the door handle if I bring that round. Don't know if you can quite see that, but the, the door handle is basically wobbling around and that's what's not uh, holding it in. So I think we need to do something about that. Uh, come around the back. Tub is pretty much as it was. Uh, I have really done absolutely nothing to it. Um, it, well, arguably, yes, I have done something to it. Now, where would be able to see it? I'm probably not, so, so, no, you're not gonna see. I'm just seeing there. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, okay, where there. So you could probably just see, where can I show you? Along here and along here, there's a weld seam. So where this mounts to the body, uh, to the sh chassis right here, it had um, just rotted through, obviously the steel to aluminum corrosion had uh, done a good job. So I had someone replace that, put a, a nice thicker piece of aluminum in there. Cause obviously you, you normally in the body, you'd have two, two layers of aluminum where the bolts go through. We just put a nice thicker piece in. Um, outside of that, the um, rear end, oh, let's come around this way first, sorry. So this had your typical Defender style lights, you know, your little round brake and, and indicator light, which I wanted to go back to the D. So all I've done at the moment is um, put, a, put a plate in there to cover up all the holes. And the reason I didn't get any more carried away, to be honest, is, is both these rear corners, that one and that one, have been uh, repaired and I would suggest possibly on more than one occasion, to be honest. Um, you can tell that because obviously, so they've put this to hide the, the seam where they've put another piece in and you could probably see as we get in closer here, there's been some other work, you know, gone. Nice thing is this side, most of it's covered up. Um, the other side, it's also probably a little bit hard to tell. You've got the end cap on here just to, to hide what's been done here, but um, again, it's it's been replaced. So because the sides are all one piece on these things, you've effectively got, this would have created as one piece, this, sorry, this would have been created in one piece all the way from there, all the way down the side, and then all the way into the center there. There's another seam in the middle. So as you can tell with the bodywork, I didn't want, didn't really want anything new. So while I could have probably taken this apart and done a slightly better job of it, um, you would have always had a seam on the end here, which would have had to have been um, either welded and then ground back to make it look as nice as possible. But, you know, it is what it is, it's sitting in there. One of the other things that I found interesting is how this would just normally sit direct on the chassis, so you could probably get a lot of rubbing. I've actually put a, I think it's about a four mil, four or five mil rubber strip down the chassis legs that this sits on. Um, and that's probably also why you now have a, a slight gap down here. But also the, the way the, um, you know, your, your cabling goes down here, down for the lights on this side, you know, cabling through here, I would have thought this would have come down and squashed it. So um, I was quite happy with it being there. Now again, the, the controversial piece, the um, indicators. So I've tried to keep these as small and out of the way as possible, you know, from from a distance, a quick look, you wouldn't probably see them. Uh, but you know, when they work, they, they're quite quite bright and I'll show you that later, sorry. And I need to wash this car as well. <laughs> um, still looking for looking for a trailer plug. I've seen a couple around, um, but massively expensive and, and they look like they uh, probably, <laughs> probably are not in the best condition as well. So, 
I'm kind of in two minds as what to do with this. Obviously, I've got the indicator wires as well, which what I'm thinking of doing is just running um, a more modern seal type plug up in the back here um, that I can uh, just connect indicators on if I need to. Um, and we'll decide what this toes in the end is, whether I want to put something a little bit more serious on it, you know, like something more modern, but um, we'll see. I'm not sure we'll plan on towing too much with this thing. It's not the most powerful of cars. Uh, rear door, still need to put a couple of bolts in, but this was a, this is not the original, this is not the one that came with it. This is a, a different one. I was quite fortunate enough in some respects, some guy was uh, trying to do up his, gave up after a while, thought he just bought a new one. Um, but it does need a little bit more work to it, but I'm not a, don't do welding, so I need an aluminium welder to help me. So they started, I think they were gonna either change the outer skin or something, because um, they started going through all the spot welds. The, because um, one of the things that happens is the, the outer skin, you know, will sometimes split in the corners. So these, these cappings are all uh, off the original. So the cappings are original, it's just this that's not. Uh, obviously all the hinges are original, etc. So I've put it on and I've adjusted as best as possible. So you can see here, if I just move that, you see a slight movement, it's a bit of movement, and that's purely because the, the aluminium's um, split in behind it. But, it functions nicely. So, you know, what more do you need really? She's all good. Um, I do need to obviously do something with these chains, uh, either get some new ones or I'll, I'll treat these and get them painted up. <coughs> Same with these. But we'll see. I always found use works, using them works really well. Uh, what else around here? Not much there. Oh, so. The spare wheel, so the arm and holder for the wheel, the the car had the uh, base unit and I think I've still got it somewhere, but someone had nicely just cut off the rod as low as possible. So, <coughs> excuse me, if, if, and again, that's available. I was thinking if I could get hold of a piece of metal uh, rod that's long enough, you know, and someone who's good at welding, I could probably just re-weld one on. I've got a tap for the for the thread, so I could easily tap that, drill a hole in the top. Um, and again, so the the wing nut and hook I bought from. Uh, oh, sorry. So the uh, so the wing nut and hook that came from uh, Bob Jones in the uh, from the Land Rover Series One Club. He he makes those. The the arm itself um, I bought at um, Newbury Show. So. Uh, Good friend in the um, in the Land Rover community. Um, oh, now his name escapes me. Darren Beard. Um, I bought that off, so thank you, Darren. See, it's on the vehicle. Um, I've got the jump start handle. Uh, that needs to be is supposed to be clipped in onto the back there. Uh, it's just finding those clips. Um, some of these parts. I think there are definitely some around. You can get hold of these things. It's just a matter of knowing where and how. Uh, what else can we tell you about in on the passenger side? Yeah, probably not a lot. Um, oh, the floor plates. Something I forgot to talk about. So the floor plates are not original. Uh, these are brand new 3mm aluminium. Uh, I do have the originals, but because someone had put in a different um, um, bulkhead, the bulkhead came down on different angles, and, and the bulkhead basically came down and stopped here. And then went up. It was more of a, you know, the later, the later series type, you know. And also, what had happened? So they'd what they'd done is the floor plates. They'd cut them off. So I've got the original floor plates, but they've been cut off about here. Uh, same on the other side. And the ring pull, again, I haven't put the the, the actual ring in yet, but <clears throat> I need a piece of chain. But that actual little tab that's hanging underneath is off the original floor plate that I've had removed and then um, welded back onto this. Uh, also, this tunnel cover was cut back to here, and this has been uh, very nicely repaired by Carl Walton. So that, I sent that up to Carl, and he's very kindly um, fixed that up for me. Uh, 
I did have another tunnel, but this one is uh, is the original, and you can tell also from the early ones had this you know pattern of studs and the, and the rubber sat in underneath like this. It didn't have that um, just a higher cover over them. That ca again came later in this model, so nice to have that in there properly. Um, and you know it's been used. It's a Land Rover. It's old. Um, you know I don't. I'm happy having it like it is. I don't l want to have this perfect. While it'd be quite nice in a way to have a perfect series one, to me then it's just a, a brand new car. And uh, you know this one, it's got lots of little things that aren't perfect. So here we have the other trafficator wire coming out here. What I'll probably do is if I do install, start installing, this one will be probably the first one I put on. Uh, purely because you know I can stick my arm out the other side um, but uh, you know uh, with the top off hey great you know people I can just use my arms anyway rather than the indicators but you know when you put the tilt on uh, which is over there which again is all wrong um, we'll just quickly look at that so when this is on uh, very hard for anyone to see inside um, this I believe is often 88 this is wrong and it's it doesn't quite fit onto the windscreen also the Hoops are curved, they should be straight. Um, and I think also this must be off um, an 88 or an 86 because the, the arms the arms that go forward to the windscreen up on here don't fit, they're too long. So, okay, let's have a look at the bonnet, see what we've got there. <coughs> Okay, now this bonnet is also obviously not necessarily perfect, but it's an 80 inch bonnet and it's had a slight dent at some point. Sorry, I'm just less resting up there. I tried to fix it as best, oh sorry. <laughs> Try to fix it as best as possible, but it is what it is and it fits all right. Okay, so. What have we got in here? A few things that are slightly more modern than should be, and some things that are spot on. Air filters are right. The pre-filter, some have a, a, a nut and bolt out here so this comes apart. Mine doesn't. Um, I can't tell you which one's right and which one's wrong. Um, this is obviously not supposed to go away around here, uh, but I had to make, this is wrong as well, it should be the rounder version. And I've had this, I made this this pipe in here, had that welded in. I've also made that pipe in the back because it wasn't in there. Um, what I'm going to do is probably to try and fit it in, here's the, the pipe slightly different. I might cut this and actually get another pipe that bends so I can just be a straight pipe into there. But we'll see. The engine, very lucky with the engine. This is, um, hasn't been touched by um, Land Rover. A lot of the Land Rover ones now, you see that this is the serial number has been ground off and it's got a number plate, new plate in it. This still has its number on the side. Um, so quite lucky uh, to get hold of this. This car had a uh, two litre diesel in it when, when we first started this work. The radiator, this is, uh, it's a May 49 radiator, so it's the closest I had could get to it um, at the time. And you know, it's fine. It's got a few modifications that someone's done to it. Someone had this in, I've just had that filled in rather than trying to repair it anymore. Again, it's something that someone did to the vehicle or the part at some point in time. The coil is I think 52, 53. And I'm impressed it still works. May have some issues to be fair because it's uh, we do have some slight misfiring issues at times, so we'll see how we go with that. Um, obviously, engine's been completely rebuilt, lots of new um, bits and pieces done with it. The oh, sorry, uh, the dizzy up here, so distributor. Obviously, that's not original. I do have the original one, but apparently, it was going to be a bit of an effort to to fix it and repair it. So. We'll see what see what happens in the future. I still, as I said, I still have it, um, and it is you know it's all all there. Um, I don't know 
the, the, I didn't, this is the one part I didn't do with, uh, this is one of the parts I didn't do. I didn't do the engine. I wanted to, but really it was a matter of time and timing. How much time did I have? How long would it take to get it done? So this was sent away and got done. Uh, the gearbox transfer case you've already seen, I completely rebuilt that, um, but the engine wasn't. So now that was done by a company up in Leeds. Now, is it? can't remember, but it's, it's Martin and Chris Pickles, um, father and son team, who uh, took away and did that. Um, Martin also built the chassis for me. Okay, what else have we got up here? Fuel pump. That, um, obviously this had diesel before, so this was here, obviously isn't in it. Uh, I just did, did a complete rebuild on that, um, changed everything out change the points out, put, um, put a capacitor across it as well, to stop any sparking, because obviously this is really fun having electronics and fuel and sparks all in one place. Great combination if you want to catch fire. Um, now, the other thing I was gonna show you these here, these relays, <coughs> if you can see those, all right? So these relays um, are what, uh, these, these are used to activate the lights. So whether you're on low dip or high dip, which effectively in, in these Land Rovers is almost the same thing. It's either one filament or two filament working, I believe. So um, I've got those and they've got their own fuses. So that's quite handy as well. Um, the, the battery tray for this is also uh, been rebuilt out of bits. So what I've done here is someone had cut off the air holder for it. So I had, um, I managed to buy a slightly more modern, um, a more modern battery tray and air holder, cut that off, cut the, this piece off, put it on, and then had to make another, uh, so a couple of these, got some of these clips, um, that some of these need a slight adjustment, and had that rebuilt. Then also got now, I'm not going to remember the guy's name, but there's a guy on the Land Rover Series 1 Cub, I think, is it Neil? Somebody? Tim? Anyway, um, I'll look it up and put it in the comments below, but he makes um, the battery out, the battery holders. Um, so I've didn't, I think, um, yeah, I think some part of this is also from, from him because certain, certainly the, the floor of this was, was quite rotten with battery acid. Um, okay. The tour of the Series 1. Um, any questions, please, again, put them in the comments below. And uh, I'll happily try and get back to you as soon as I can. I haven't gone under the vehicle um, yet. Uh, there's certainly a lot more you can um, sort of see if you go on to some other videos. But um, I think I've talked now for quite a bit. So I've, in fact, looking at this, I've been talking for nearly 30 minutes. So this is going to be quite a long one. I'll probably have to edit some out. Okay, so thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you're having a uh, while, while we're all in lock. Ooh, hang on a sec. Right, guys. So. I hope you enjoyed that that uh, that video. Uh, this is the tour of uh, the series one that I built, uh, rebuilt, took apart, and uh, yeah, there she is. So actually, let's do one more thing. One more thing before we go. Let's let's do a live cold start. That's actually one thing that needs to be repaired. I think the, um, I don't think the otter switch in the back of the head works because I've driven it for, I've driven it for a good 10 minutes and that doesn't go out. So, and the engine's certainly getting warm. So you can hear the fuel pump ticking a little bit. Right, bit of choke. Lovely, look at that. First time.
Okay guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in a video in the near future. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and go on, subscribe. It doesn't hurt. Thank you very much guys and see you in the next video.